if you are inviting people to mediate and those people whom you are inviting to mediate are interested parties people who have to gain from your quarrel or from your difficulty don't expect any reconciliation they won't be honest order order questions to the secretary of state for foreign and commonwealth affairs tonia antoniazzi question yeah, number one yeah. mr speaker minister harriet baldwin thank you mr speaker the uk regularly discusses the violence in cameroon with international partners including france and the united states i welcome french support for the recent uk austria joint un human rights council statement about the deteriorating situation in Cameroon. Antoniazzi. Southern Cameroon voted to join French Cameroon as federated states equal in status, but this is clearly not what has happened. They are treated as a region made up of second-class citizens. The UK has a duty to the Southern Cameroons to use all available instruments in order to find a solution to the growing crisis, a solution which takes into account the wishes of the people of the Southern Cameroon. Will the Secretary of State meet with me and the delegation of Southern Cameroons to discuss possible solutions? Minister. Well, can I start by congratulating the Honourable Lady for getting this number one on the order paper today because it has been a, a worsening crisis and the UK has been strongly engaged uh, with our international partners to try and find a way forward. With respect to uh, the, the territorial integrity of Cameroon, of course the UK recognises the territorial integrity of Cameroon, but we also believe that where uh, there are calls for more autonomy in uh, the southwest and the northwest, that the, the government of Cameroon needs to engage in an inclusive political dialogue because currently uh, the violence from both sides is leading to really serious situations for civilians on the ground. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In her discussions with US counterparts about the worrying situation in Cameroon, has the Minister been able to ask them about suggestions that have been made that resources that they've given to help the Cameroonian government in the fight against terror, Boko Haram, may be being diverted and misused and used in attacks on some of the communities in Cameroon? Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, as, as I often find myself saying in these, uh, these questions, I'm happy to be uh, accountable in terms of the, what the UK government has been uh, doing. I can confirm that the UK government uh, has uh, extensive discussions, not only uh, with the government of Cameroon, who, as my honourable friend, my right honourable friend will know, um, are a partner with the international community in terms of the fight against Boko Haram and the Islamic State of West Africa in the north of the country, uh, but also, of course, we have discussions with international partners uh, about a way forward in terms of the uh, views expressed uh, with increasing violence by those of a separatist tendency in the southwest and northwest provinces. Alison Thewlis. Much, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. One of my constituents is a member of the South Cameroonian di diaspora and is deeply concerned with what's going on. Uh, a recent amnesty report noted the presence of arbitrary arrest, a torture and tension, uh, in detention, and the existence of secret and illegal detention facilities in Cameroon. Does the Secretary of State agree with me that such activities are a stark violation of the Commonwealth Charter? And if so, what efforts um, has, she, has she made as a minister to engage with Cameroon through the Commonwealth? Well, the Honourable Lady is absolutely right to uh, raise uh, the range of different uh, human rights uh, violations and abuses that were noted in uh, the statement that we were very pleased that 39 countries uh, signed up to at the most recent UN Human Rights Council. Uh, specifically uh, with regard to the Commonwealth, I can tell the House that Lord Ahmed, the Minister for the Commonwealth, wrote to the Commonwealth Secretary General recently to share UK concerns about Cameroon and press for further Commonwealth engagement on the matter. The UK's aim is to be the largest G7 investor in Africa by 2022. Will any of this investment be going to Cameroon? Indeed, uh, my honourable friend states uh, the UK's uh, policy in terms of aiming to be an am ambitious uh, investor in terms of inward investment into African economies. And I can confirm that 
uh, there are UK companies that invest in Cameroon, and certainly uh, that is absolutely something that businesses are uh, free to choose to do. I think in terms of uh, the political track, though, uh, that we are trying to engage with the government of Cameroon. I spoke to uh, the Prime Minister there recently um, to encourage them uh, to find a, a way forward in terms of political and inclusive dialogue that can address some of the concerns that are being raised. Michael. Speaker, I spent time in Cameroon in 2013 as a political volunteer with VSO, and it breaks my heart to see what is happening to that beautiful country today. It seems to me we have a very potent mix of contemporary challenges and the long tail of our own and indeed French colonial history here. Can we have a two-pronged approach to this? Can we first of all have our colleagues in DFID tackling the urgent crises that there are with displaced peoples in conflict uh, and then from her own office a proper effort to get a diplomatic solution here? Well, the, the right honourable gentleman is absolutely right that uh, there is uh, a, an ongoing humanitarian crisis. And earlier this year, I did authorise that we would work through UNICEF to provide the immediate assistance in terms of humanitarian needs. Some over 400,000 people have been displaced in this crisis. Over 30,000 have fled into Nigeria. And I can say uh, that DFID is working in terms of programming. And we're also urging uh, the government to allow access for humanitarian actors into all parts of Cameroon. Liz McInnes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Human Rights Watch said last week, and I quote, Government forces in Cameroon's Anglophone regions have killed scores of civilians and torched hundreds of homes over the past six months. So can I ask the Minister of State, how many more innocent civilians need to be slaughtered for Cameroon to be suspended by the Commonwealth? Yeah. 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 Well, she's absolutely right that there have been human rights abuses and human rights violations from all sides in this conflict, and there have been hospitals burnt, there have been villages that have been torched, um, and we drew attention to a range of these different issues in terms of the statement that we made at the United Nations Human Rights Council, which the UK sponsored. And uh, in terms of the Commonwealth, I can confirm that obviously the UK uh, is one of the members of the Commonwealth and has, um, through our Commonwealth Minister, written to uh, the Commonwealth Secretariat and, uh, uh, and suggested that the Commonwealth Secretariat uh, uh, encourage discussions on this topic in terms of uh, future meetings. Order, before we move to question two in the name of